Factoring is taking apart. Multiplication is putting together. We're going to factor by GCF, by the greatest common factor. So we've got to talk about that. And so I have some questions here to help you along. Here we have a polynomial, 20x squared plus 5x, and x is to the one power. The first thing we're going to do is identify the leading term. That's the highest degree term. So the leading term is going to be 20x squared. The leading coefficient is the coefficient of the x part of the term. So the leading coefficient is 20. And in a few minutes, you'll see the reason for this. But I'm going to put a plus in front of it, which means that the leading coefficient is positive. Now, we are going to factor each term in the polynomial. We're going to break it down. And this is how we're going to break it down. 20 breaks down into, now you can do this any way you like. You could say 5 times 4, 2 times 10, but let's say 2 times 10. And 10 breaks down into 2 times 5. Meanwhile, 5 breaks down into 1 times 5. So I'm going to rewrite these terms totally broken down. 20x squared is 2 times 2 times 5 times x times x. plus 5x is 5x. Now I'm going to do something else that most of the time is not important, but when you're factoring, it can be. So I'm going to put a times one and a times one. Now I'm going to identify the common factors. So I'm going to rewrite these. 2 times 2 times 5. Let's put the 1 there with the other numbers. Times x times x plus 5 times 1 times x. And I'm going to circle the numbers that are in both terms at the same time. So I'm going to get a green marker. Both terms, no, this term does not contain um, a two. Remember that the terms are separated by plus signs. So this is one of your terms, and this is one of your terms. Now, both of these terms contain a five. And yes, I did put a one there. I'm going to, well, ignore the one. And both of these terms contain an X. So the greatest common factor is called the GCF. And for this polynomial, it's going to be five X. Now this, we are going to rewrite the polynomial. So I should have really said, rewrite. And you do it in this form. 5x is your GCF. 
Now here's what we're going to do to our GCF. I'm going to come back up here and I'm going to mark through the five in each term and mark through the X in each term. The leftovers are what's left over after I do that. The two, the two, the one, and the X. We leave the ones there. Two times two times one times X. And the plus sign right there. And all that's left here is a one. And that's the reason I needed the one. So our final answer that we would put in the answer box in my math lab is that 20x squared plus 5x equals 5x times 2 times 2 times 1 is 4 x plus 1. And now this is how you check your work. Is that really the correct factorization? Well, I'm going to put it in a blue box. But if it's wrong, I'll take it out of the blue box. Here's how you check your work. You multiply. You distribute 5x to the 4x and to the plus 1. 5x times 4x, let's go ahead and multiply it like this plus 5x times 1. That's going to give me 5 times 4, which is 20, x times x, which is x squared, plus 5x times 1 is 5x. So yes, this is exactly what I started with. So that means I have factored this correctly into 5x times 4x plus 1. And that's the answer. That is the factorization of 20x squared plus 5x. And that's what factoring by GCF basically is all about. Pretty fast, pretty easy. Let's try it again. I included the answer here so you could see what the answer looks like. OK, we're going to break down each term in the polynomial. So 3R squared, oh, I didn't identify the leading term. You're going to see why I'm doing this in a, in a minute. Probably the next problem. The leading term is the highest degree term. Remember that the degree of this term is 2. The degree of this term is 1 because of the 1, and the degree of constants is 0. So, I suppose I should take this gum out of my mouth. I love gum. Mm. Yeah, it's the polite thing to do, isn't it? Mm. On days when I'm feeling kind of nervous, I chew gum and it makes me into the calmest person in the world. Almost. Okay, the leading term is the highest degree term. 
three R squared. The leading coefficient is three. Now I'm going to break down each term into its component parts. 3r squared minus 3r minus 15 is going to be 3 times r times r minus 3 times r minus 3r, excuse me. Yeah, well, all right. 3 times 5. Notice that all three terms contain a 3. Now, admittedly, this is a positive 3, and this is a negative 3, but we can change that. Maybe. All right, this is going to be three times R times R. Let me do it underneath. Three times R times R. I can, I can write this correctly like this because three R and R times three are the same thing. So there's a particular reason I'm doing this, trust me. Minus five times three. 3 and R are multiplied, so I can change the order. The negative sign is still there. So, now I've got a positive 3 and a positive 3 and a positive 3. So, each of these terms contains a positive 3. This is going to be important in just a minute. Each of these terms contains a positive 3. So, okay, I can see now that I can combine these two steps. However, that wasn't the way I wrote it, so let's do it the way I wrote it. R times 3 minus 5 times 3, and I'm going to circle the GCF, that is all the numbers and letters that are in each term. There are three terms, has to be in all three terms at the same time. R, these two terms contain R's, but not the last one. So R is not part of the GCF. The GCF is only three. Now I'm going to, excuse me, mark through the three so that I don't write it again. Then I'm going to write the polynomial in this form. Three is the GCF. And the leftovers are R times R, which is R squared minus R, minus five. So that's my, my theory, okay? Well, no, it's my hypothesis. Now I'm going to check my answer, and here's how, check, three, times r squared minus r minus five is going to be three times r squared, three times minus r, and three times minus five. So I'll have three r squared, and I could be careful to put the three over here and the three over there, but I can also kind of fit it in here right there in front and fit it in here. Well, this doesn't really matter, does it? I can always put it on the end. So minus three 
r minus 5 times 3, which is 15. 3 r squared minus 3 r minus 15. And yes, this is what we started with. So this is the answer that I would put in the answer box in my math lab. I would write three parentheses R squared, and you have a tool to put in um, a, 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 um, a superscript. R squared minus R minus five, and then close your parentheses. And that's what you would type in my math lab. So let's review what we've done. Aha, because we're about to change the game a little bit. Here we have a polynomial and we factored it and we circled the numbers and, and letters yeah, the numbers and letters that each term have in common, they make up the GCF, the greatest common factor. Then I wrote it like this. And I multiplied all the stuff in the first term together and all that was left in the second term was a one. And that's why I had to be careful to put ones in because I saw right away that each term contained a 5x so that if my one wasn't there, when I pulled out the 5x, I would think there was a zero there. That wouldn't work, no. So I put a one there because I knew I would have an empty place. The more you do this, the more you'll find it out. Another telemarketer. Okay, here, here we have, yes, yes, yes. Now it's over. Um, all right, here we have three terms. We have a positive three here. We have a minus and a three, but since there's a three and an R, I was able to switch the terms around, which means I was able to say that yes, each term contains a positive three. So my GCF is a positive three. And I'm left with minus R and minus five. When you have multiplication, you can change the order of the terms. That's why that's why multiplication is so great. Okay, any discussion before I move on? Okay. Then here we go. I'm going to find the leading term and the leading coefficient. The leading term is negative 2s to the third power cubed. Negative 2s cubed. And the leading coefficient is negative 2. This changes everything. When you have, well, this is a rule. When you have a negative leading term, you must have a negative GCF. That's a rule. I didn't make the rule, it's a rule. So I'm gonna write this for you right now. When the leading term, uh, leading coefficient, I'm sorry, leading coefficient
is negative. The GCF has to be negative. I'm going to write any G there because I ran out of room. All right, now we are going to factor each term in this polynomial so that each term contains a negative factor. Well, first, let's factor. Let's just break it down we're going to have negative 2 times s times s times s plus 2 times 3 times s minus uh, 12. 12 is 2 times 6, and 6 is 2 times 3. Okay. So two times two times three. Here's what you have to do. Okay. Negative two is the leading coefficient and each of these terms contains a negative two, well, a two. So I'm going to rewrite this. First, we're going to have a negative 2. It has to be a negative 2 because 2 is in each term. So here's what I do. I've got negative 2 times s to the third. This last term doesn't contain an s, so I know I don't have to worry about the s's being in the GCF plus positive two, note. Positive two equals negative two times negative one. So I'm going to write this two as negative two I'll even put them in parentheses, times negative one, and then times three times s, times three times s. Now remember, remember please, that I need my dark, there it is, okay, it's already taken care of. Um, remember that this is what I wanted to do. Um, I am going to move that over a little bit just because I need more room. I'm going to move the negative over here and then put a plus sign there. Because remember that terms are always separated by plus signs, even when you've got a minus sign. Now I didn't bother back here to change this polynomial to what it really was, but I could have. I could have written this polynomial as 3r squared plus negative 3 times r plus negative 3 times 5. And then because I needed a positive GCF, because the leading coefficient is positive, I would have rewritten this as 3R squared plus negative R times three, they're the same thing, plus negative five times positive three. 
I didn't want to complicate it more than it was complicated already, but maybe it would have been better to go ahead and do that. And then we would have seen we have a positive three and a positive three and a positive three. Okay, now I do have to bring that up. Because it's important here. So there will be a plus sign, plus, plus, plus there, a plus sign. And then I've got a negative two and a pot times a positive two times a positive three. And then erase these little marks that I seem to have inadvertently made. Okay. Now I haven't changed the problem. It's important to note that this is still going to be a positive six because look, Negative two times negative one is positive two. Positive two times three is positive six. And back here, I'll have plus a negative two. Well, that would still be a negative. That would still be a minus. But now, 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 I have a negative two in all three terms. That's what I need because my leading coefficient, let's move this. My leading coefficient is negative two. So I am going to circle with my green marker. I'm going to circle negative two and negative two and negative two. Negative two is my negative GCF, which is what I need. Now the form that I'm going to write this in has the negative GCF, the GCF is always in front, the negative GCF, negative two, times the leftovers, parentheses, parentheses. I will have negative one, times three times s that will be negative three ah i forgot that i forgot the s cubed Ooh, danger danger okay i keep having trouble finding these guys um yes okay here we go s to the third oh i didn't mark them out that's why i'm having trouble Mark them out so they don't come back and haunt you. Now. OK, plus I'm going to keep the plus for a minute, then I'm going to rewrite it again. Negative one times three. Times S. Plus two times three. And that will give me negative two parentheses S to the third or S cubed plus times minus is minus minus three S plus six. Oh, got to have that parenthesis on the end. Now double check your work. Negative two times s to the third minus three s plus six. This is what we're going to do. I'm going to put that plus sign back because life will just be easier. Negative two s plus negative two times negative three s plus negative two times six. That will be up to the third. Negative 2s to the third. 
negative two times negative three is positive six plus six s plus times, well, this is going to be plus negative 12, plus times minus is minus, so we'll write it correctly one more time. Negative two s to the third plus six s minus 12, and that should be what we started with. Right there, negative two s to the third plus six s minus 12. So this is our correct factorization with negative two in front. And in parentheses, the leftovers are 6 cubed minus 3s plus 6. Now I admit this is hard and it takes practice, but you've got to do it. So we're going to move on and I'll show you again with a shorter problem. Should have started with that, didn't think of it. Okay, what is our leading term? Negative 2b squared. The leading term, I should have said coefficient. The leading coefficient is negative. And now we know what that means. Here's the answer. See the negative uh, GCF out in front? Okay. So here I go. That means our GCF has to be negative. And since this term contains a negative two, we're gonna have to have a negative two here. So I'm going to cut down the steps a little bit, show you how you can do it if you want to. All right, factor each term in the polynomial so that each term contains a negative factor. All right. We're going to have, I don't want blue, I want black. Negative two times B times B plus 28, note, 28, equals 2 times 14. It also equals negative 2 times negative 14. So I'm going to put negative 2 times negative 14. Since the only number here is a negative 2, I know I don't really have to bother to factor that all the way out. Our, oh, B times B. Negative 2 times negative 14 times B. Now, the GCF is going to be negative 2. Both of these terms now contain a negative 2, and they both contain a B. So our negative G, uh, our negative GCF is negative 2B. And now I'm going to mark them out. Mark, 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 mark. Now I'm going to write the polynomial in that form eventually, but right now I want to clean this up. So, this is going to be B, oh, okay, well, negative 2B, parentheses, leftovers, B plus negative 14B, ah, 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 yeah, the B went. So B plus negative 14. Now what that's going to be is negative 2B times B plus minus is minus. 
so minus 14. And that's the answer I would put in the answer box. But let's go ahead and multiply them together, distribute. So negative, ugh. negative 2b times b plus negative 14. Since this is the same as that, I can use that because I know I'm going to be multiplying each of these terms by negative 2b. So that'll be negative 2b times b plus negative 2b times negative 14. Negative 2b squared plus negative 2 times negative 14 is positive 28b.